means versus ends. Um, do we actually seek to accomplish something when we do something? Or is the act itself the accomplishment? Or is the act itself the goal? Winston Smith, when he's brought to room 101, um, seems to not know what it is they're torturing him for. He doesn't understand why it's happening until the moment when he breaks. Then he gets it. Throughout the entire period of his torture, he was essentially weakened by the idea that there was a reason for this, that the party was going somewhere with its persecution of its own population, or its, in particular, its imprisonment and torture of himself. He didn't realize what the true purpose behind, or even the true motive, I guess, behind the party's actions were. He didn't understand that until he was there, strapped into the torture chair in room 101 with the rats about to burrow into his face. At that moment, he realized what the party was. He realized what the party's motives were. He'd had it explained to him but he didn't quite grasp it until that moment. At that time, he suddenly realized that, that the situation he was in was not a rational situation and never had been from the very beginning. He had attempted to use his reason, his logic, his analytical skills to grasp what it was that the party wanted so he could give it to them. Um, when he rebelled originally, he thought that he was actually rebelling against something, for something. He thought that the party had arrested him because of what he had done. Again, until he was facing those rats inch inches from his face, he did not understand in a fundamental way what the party was doing and what the party was about and what the torture was about. O'Brien, the... Uh, torturer-in-chief, I guess we'll call him here, although that's kind of a misnomer, said to him before he ended up in the torture chamber, power is not a means, it is an end. One does not establish a dictatorship in order to safeguard a revolution. One makes a revolution in order to establish a dictatorship. The object of persecution is persecution. The object of torture is torture. The object of power is power. That is illogical and irrational. To our analytical side, to our logical and reasonable side, that's near impossible to understand, or if we do understand it, the only thing we can do is push it away in revulsion and hate it. Um, but, of course, Winston's failure to fundamentally understand that is precisely what landed him in Room 101. Um, he'd made idols of logic and reason. He'd made idols of analysis, of identity, of all kinds of things, to try to make sense out of what was going on around him. All of these tools led him astray. In fact, his use of these tools was part of the problem. It's part of the mechanism that landed him in Room 101. If he had stopped to think that what humans do isn't necessarily logical or reasonable, in fact, Often it isn't. Um, he may have been able to avoid landing himself in room 101. Uh, he may have been able to take the necessary steps to avoid sitting there facing those rats. But he had made idols of these tools. He thought that logic and reason would somehow save him. But he forgot, of course, that everything that was taking place around him was something orchestrated by human beings, and human beings are 
I won't say illogical or irrational, but the illogical and the irrational part of us isn't going anywhere. So what he had done was he had assumed that everything had a logical explanation, that everything could be mapped out, that everything could be solved by a proper systems analysis. And from start to finish, he was completely wrong because O'Brien, his torturer, was simply saying, I'm torturing you because I like to. It's kind of like that scene from um, Reservoir Dogs. I'm not going to torture you because I want any information from you. I'm going to torture you because I like to torture people. How does the logical mind come to terms with that? The logical faculties, reasonable uh, analysis. How do we come to terms with that? With that aspect of our thinking? How does an over-reliance on logic and reason and dialectic and systems analysis lead us astray when we are trying to understand ourselves and our relation to the quote-unquote outside world. Logic is a useful tool that we have come up with to serve our ends. Remember, we created logic. We created systems analysis. We created all of these things to achieve certain goals or to perform certain tasks. The moment we rely on them to solve everything is the moment we're in danger of sitting there with the cage on our face and the rats just inches away. Again, I'll quote Star Trek. Computers make wonderful servants. I had no desire to serve underneath them. That's Mr. Spock from Star Trek. Logic, reason, dialectic, whatever, these things are very useful tools. The moment we put ourselves at their service and not vice versa, it's the first step on the road to the chair in room 101.